Hello friends, this video on food production enhancement part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed about the various techniques both natural as well as artificial for animal breeding, on similar lines we are going to discuss about plant breeding. So what is plant breeding? So it is management of plant species to create better plant types with better yields. So that means now our focus is to enhance the food production from plants. Now there are various food that are obtained from plants. For example, the variety of vegetables, fruits, the cereals, they are all obtained from plants. So how can we increase the yield of, from the plants? How can we increase the quality of the plants? So that is what we will study in plant breeding. <clears throat> so now what is done actually is that mix and match technique is followed that is desired traits are selected from the plants and then the plants are allowed to mate with each other so plant breeding is done based on the desirable traits let us take an example let us suppose you have one plant which is tall and which has white flowers so that is one plant which you have. This is your first set of plant. You have another plant which is short in height. It is very dwarf and it has red flowers. Okay. Now what you, what you observe is that the short plants are easily eaten by animals. So the animals easily feed on them and then the plants die. So white short height is not a desirable feature but at the same time it is seen that the red flowers are a desirable feature because red flowers are able to better attract the insects for pollination so red flower is a desired feature so white flower is not a desired feature but tall plant is a desired feature so if we want tall plant with red flower what we can do we can cross plant one with plant two so once the breeding is done, what would be the result? Now the result you might get some tall plants with red flowers. So you will get some tall plants with red flowers. Now with these tall plants with red flowers, you can further self pollinate them and you can further produce plants of similar types. So that is how you can actually do plant breeding. So the selected or the desirable traits are selected and then accordingly the plants are allowed to breed. Now when we talk about plant breeding, especially in India, we, it is very obvious to talk about agriculture because India is an agricultural country where agriculture is the primary source of income for the entire population. Now what it was observed was that after independence, it was a big challenge for India to provide food to the entire population because the population was continuously increasing. But the food production also had to increase continuously. So it became a challenge at that time. So therefore, a lot of initiatives were started uh, to come into place in order to provide enough food for the growing population. Now, it, now it is observed that almost 62% of the population is employed in agriculture. So agriculture gives employment to a lot of people and obviously agriculture provides food which is required by all the people. So plant breeding techniques were put into place because of which the production of the basic crops like wheat and rice increased drastically and in India you you would know that people, the staple food for most of the people is either wheat or rice. So once the production of these two basic things got increased, so at least people were not starving, people were getting something to eat. So somewhere around the 1960s, this enhancement happened due to the implementation of plant breeding techniques. So we will talk about some of the techniques right here. So this was known as green revolution. Green revolution, why green? Because plants or trees were all green in color. So this was called green revolution because it was a sudden and drastic change. Now, whenever we talk about agriculture, so why do we talk about these breeding techniques? That's because even if we think that, okay, let's increase the land or let's utilize more land for agriculture. 
but that is not possible not only because there is scarcity of land but also because not all types of lands are fit for cultivation because for cultivation also you need a specific type of soil that should you know, favor cultivation you need specific climatic conditions to favor cultivation so a lot of factors are involved so if they are not satisfied the land cannot be really used for agriculture so looking at all these it was seen that green revolution could actually bring a lot of increase in the production of the basic food from plants. So now let us look at some of the examples of plants where there was a huge improvement with plant breeding techniques. So let us look at the examples of certain plants where improvement was observed with plant breeding techniques. So one example is rice. So today you can see that there are many different varieties of rice which are available. For example, you see Sona, Masuri, Basmati, Minikate, Idli rice as well as Annapurna. So not only these, there are many more varieties of rice which are available. And if you see them, they many of them look little similar. Many of them look different. Some of them have each grain very long. For some, the grains are very short. For some, the color is pure white. For some, the color is little brown. So their appearance differ. The taste also differs and the nutritional content also differ, but not completely. But a little bit of difference is there. So all these different varieties of rice came up with the plant breeding techniques. Similarly with wheat, so you have so many different varieties like Sonalika, Kalyan Sona, Triti Kale, Durum. So these are all various varieties of wheat. With millets, you have different hybrid varieties of maize, jawar, bajra. So they were all successfully developed with by using the plant breeding techniques. Also with sugarcane. Now with sugarcane, I would like to tell you the story, which will actually tell you that how plant breeding techniques help. Now, there were these two varieties of sugarcane, which was growing in two parts of the country. Saccharum barberry was one variety of sugarcane, which was which used to grow in northern parts of India. So this was this used to grow in the north northern part of India whereas Saccharum officinarum was that variety of sugarcane which used to grow in the southern part of the country. Now it was observed that Saccharum barberry so this had poor sugar content so the sugar content in this was poor and also the yield was poor so not too many plants came up with this. So the yield of sugarcane out of these plants were less. Whereas this one that is Saccharum officinarum with this the sugar content was also good and the yield was also good. But now people wanted to grow sugarcane in North India as well because the population was growing right. So you need the crops throughout the country. So you just cannot depend on southern parts of India for producing all the sugarcane. So how could you you how could you uh, grow sugar again in northern parts of the country which had good yield and good sugar content now this office in Adam was not capable of growing in northern parts of the country that's because there is a lot of difference between the climate of north and south india and also the type of soil so the climatic conditions were not the same in north and south india so therefore what was done the, the these two varieties of sugarcane were crossed and as a result a new variety of sugarcane was obs, uh, was obtained which had good yield which had good sugar content and which was capable of growing in north india so all the desirable qualities were present in that new variety of sugarcane and then those new varieties of sugarcane were capable of being grown in north india and that is how the sugarcane was grown in both North and South India and also a new variety of sugarcane was formed. So these are some of the examples where we see plant breeding techniques help to give rise to new uh, breeds of different plants like rice, wheat, millets and that is how we have different breeds or different varieties of each of them today. And with the development of new varieties, it helps because they can be grown in different parts of the country and that is how they can actually contribute to increasing the food production. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes 
and take an online test. Thank you once again.